What up, brothers and sisters, and welcome to MTG Malone with me, Max Malone. Happy freaking Friday. Thank God it is Friday. Friday's just the best because that means that we have two days of just weekend right in front of us. Oh, so freaking sweet. Also, I would be finally able to work in my garden, which I am waiting for it since so freaking long. So, yeah, it's not big, but at least it is a cool little garden. So, if you didn't do so already, subscribe to the channel. Help us reach the next huge freaking mass of three freaking thousand. I think until the end of June we will absolutely be able to do it with your help. So smash that button like there is no tomorrow. We're only seven people away from making up this video to 2,700. So it's not even that far away. And uh, I would be very, very much appreciating. And uh, there will be another giveaway also. So uh, yeah, you have all the incentives. But enough yammering. Let's finally get into the adventure guard, Hammerin. Oh man, I really love Quandrix Tempo and that is why today I had to make another Quandrix Tempo deck and this one is so much freaking fun. And uh, yeah, so let's get over it real quick. We have some nice creatures in here which are working by themselves really freaking good with the Dragon's Guard Elite. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus one plus one. And for 6 you can double the counters on the Dragon's Guard Elite, which is very freaking bueno. Then we have the Coma, which we're trying to ramp into very good. So, can't be countered, you create a 3-3 snake, little coil, and you can tap a creature down by sacrificing the snake and those abilities, or you can tap down a permanent. So whatever it is, even a land if you want to, and its activated abilities can't be activated this turn, which is very freaking good. And then you can give Coma Indestructible, so you have the choice. But you will be making no snake the moment she comes down. But then afterwards, you will make a snake in their upkeep, in your upkeep, in theirs, in yours. You will have a lot of snacks. Just a lot of little snacks to get in there. Which is so freaking fun. And the rest of the deck is a lot of spells and a lot of card draw and a lot of tempo. So let's get over it real quick. Spells wise, we have the Quandrix Command. You return a creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand can even be a, uh, a man land, so you can return that. You can counter target artifact or enchantment spell, so if you want to put down the hammer on turn 3, you can just deny that. You can put two 1-1 one -one counters on a target creature, and if you put that on the Dragon's Guard Elite, you put three counters on the Dragon's Guard Elite because you are uh, casting a spell, so an instant or sorcery spell. And then you can shuffle up to three target cards from a graveyard into a library, might be useful, who freaking knows. Then we have the Decisive Denial. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Or you counter a non-creature spell unless its controller pays 3. Also pretty freaking sweet. Then we have uh, 3 Cultivates. Just to be sure that we can ramp into our coma real freaking quick. We have 4 Frantic Inventory to draw ourselves some cards. And uh, it's also very nice ambush for the Dragon's Guard Elite. If they're attacking in with a 2-2. You just draw a card and make a 3-3 out of your Dragon's Guard Elite. A very freaking sweet. It is everything you want it to be. And then of course for a snakeskin veils. Because we really need to give our creatures hexproof. And uh, yeah. You can also just put a counter on the Dragon's Guard Elite. It will be two counters. So it is very freaking sweet. And then we have the Great Hand. Just because the Dragon's Guard Elite will be so big so soon. That we can put down the Great Hand very very fast. It is a freaking blast. But that's not all. The deck is called Adventure Guard. Why is that? Well, because we have a very nice Tempo Adventure package in here with the Edgar. It's a 1-1, one, one, but whenever you play a creature with Adventure, you draw a card. So that is the Brazen Borrower, which will return something to your opponent's hand. It can't return Manlands, so think about that. Uh, I didn't. So uh, yeah, it came up. It came up in the games. So here it is. You return target non land permanent to an opponent's hand. Uh, to, uh, yeah, to an opponent's hand. And then you have a Brazen Borrower for the Tempo game to get in there for a lot of fun, and it will also trigger the Dragon's Guard Elite, it will draw your card with the Edgar, very freaking sweet. Then the same with the Love Strike Beast, you'll create a 1-1 human, which will trigger the Dragon's Guard Elite, you will put down the Love Strike Beast, which will draw the, uh, trigger the Edgar Innkeeper, which will maybe also trigger the Great Hand, so you are drawing a lot of cards. It is very hard to have a good mixture between creatures and spells with this kind of deck, because you want to have enough to trigger your Dragon's Guard Elite, but you don't want to have too much to not have creatures on the board, because somehow you need to win. So, everything is very fun in here, trust me. The only thing that can really stop you is if you draw like 4 or 5 or 6 or 7 lands in a row, and that will come up. 
Trust me. So, land-wise, we have six beautiful Strixhaven lands. I forgot to change them before, so here we are. Six beautiful Strixhaven forests. We have four tight channel bark channel pathways. We have four vine glimmer snarl to go with these Strixhaven lands. So that is the reason why. And we have four fabled passages. Just to make sure that we find whatever we need. So, this is the adventure guard. Getting in there for adventure. Being guarded. And yes, there is no dragons in here. I'm freaking sorry, but it is still a very fun deck. And we have a huge arse snake. So everything is still freaking bueno. Alright. Thank you all so very much for tuning in on this beautiful Friday. Subscribe, ring that little bell. I'm Matches Malone, and I will see you in those dragon guarding games. Alrighty. So, yesterday, as you knew, I didn't sleep, so I couldn't play. So we're still very low. Very, very low. We're going first. I like this hand. I mean, we have three lands. We have, uh... Yeah. The uh, Cultivate and we have the Brazen Borrower, so everything is bueno. Everything is freaking bueno. And we even have Dragon's Guard Elite. Are we putting it down here? I mean, does it really matter? Anyone can see, nothing really matters to me, but, uh... Right now, I think it is pretty good to have the Dragon's Guard Elite down. If he has a Bone Crusher Giant, I mean, what you gonna do about it? What you gonna do about it? Not too much. That much I can tell you. So, we're putting down the Snarl. Yes, we are showing off that we have a land. Now, we're attacking in here. If he has a... He doesn't have the Bone Crusher Giant. Okay, I don't think that we will lose because of one damage at the end. I really don't think so. Really don't. So, one, two, three, four. We're still only three lands away from the coma, which is pretty sweet. Dragon's Guard Elite is getting bigger and bigger. And we have the Brazen Borrower, so everything is still bueno. The Satchmore Witch. Alrighty. Oh, freaking righty. So let's offer him a trade here. I don't think he will take it. Don't think he will. And if he doesn't, well, we're just getting in with the Brazen Borrower. Alrighty, so, we are, uh, yeah, we are taking, uh, three life here. You can have it. You can have it. Because we're getting in there for four, which is even better. And we're drawing the frantic inventory. Just get in there for as much damage as we can. Oh, looks good. Looks so fine. So, next turn we have a 5-5. Five five, and we have the Brazen Borrower ready to go. And to turn afterwards, we will have a coma. We will have a beautiful little coma. So beautiful and little. Yes. Alrighty. So he really needs to uh, worry a little bit here. Really does. Alright, he already knows about this island, so let's just get it over here. Alrighty. Alrighty. So are we just getting in there for a lot? I think we are. I mean, if we have the possibility... This is just so much. This is just an 8-8 eight, eight now. Awesome. And next turn we still have the coma. And then we can just tap down everything he owns. So, unless of course now that he's a super smart guy. And he has a... Uh, claim the Firstborn. Ready to rock and roll with my Dragon's Guard Elite. The Amherstern Predator. Might still have a claim the First. He does not. Okay. Love to freaking see it. Love to see it. Oh boy. The greatest hench. So, we, uh, we will still have enough, because the Great Hench will give us exactly what we need. So, everything is freaking good. Nice. Thanks. Thank you so much. I think it is nice, indeed. I think it is very nice, indeed. Alright, we are, we are getting in there. I mean, he has to block. So, uh, if he wants to, uh, you know, sacrifice one of his creatures here, I'm fine with that. Then we have the Decisive Denial, so we can fight... Well, you, you actually should do that. You actually should do that. Tap the Amazon Predator. Sacrifice the Eye Twitch. Seems fine to me. Seems a pretty fine to me. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Not gonna lie. That is not bad. But it still takes uh, at least one turn where I can get another snack. And then I can tap down the Amazon Predator. I can then fight your... Oh, yes, this is looking so good. 
This is looking so good. All right, I freaking love it. I mean, I love the Amistone Predator, but I just love Coma a little bit more. Just a little a smidgen, you know? So. When he activates the fumes, it will go on the stack, but he needs to target it before. So, uh, yeah, he needs to have a spell before he does it. So I think we still have a good chance. Still, I really think we have a good chance here. Especially with our second coma, ready to rock and roll. The Nightmare Shepherd. Cheeky. Very cheeky. All right. All right, all right, all right. So. We're tapping down the Amherstone Predator. If he has a kill spell here, it can't target the coma because it has a counter on it. So I'm counting eh, on that. So I think we got him. 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 So what you got here? What you got? Is it a... Uh, I don't know. Sacrifice creature, draw for stuff. All right. Yeah, that doesn't really matter to me. Does not really uh, matter uh, to me. All right, so now we're tapping down uh, the Nightmare Shepherd. I think that is it, Mr. That's It. I think that is it. All right, and just to put insult to injury, we're also fighting. Yes, fight away, pay the life. Oh, baby, mm, getting in there for a lot of damage. Just in case, you never know if he has a flesh creature or whatever. If he does have a flesh creature, I don't want to fall in that trap. Ain't afraid of no ghosts. So, those two are fighting now. Goodbye, Sedgemore Witch. Good oh no, oh, right. Yeah, that wasn't too smart. That wasn't actually too smart. But hey, whoever said I was smart? No one. No one ever said that. No one ever uh, did. All right, we're looking for an answer here. Maybe he's also just giving up. We will see, but uh, I really don't want to be just a 1 million percent sure that we got it. All right, we could still find an answer. Just another decisive denial, and we're super bueno. He just surrendered. We didn't even need it. Mm, all righty. So, he could have, like, had a uh, flash creature. So, yeah, better be safe than sorry. Better be safe than freaking sorry. All right, that was a very nice battle. Coma, my friend. Stavrosova. 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 Opponent's going first. But we have a very, very nice curve here. So let us see what colors he's playing. I bet it's red. Oh, it's black. And blue? Interesting. So maybe our Edgar will be done so immediately. But it's still better than losing our Dragon Scar Elite, to be honest. And uh, with the Quandrix, we can always get it back. Alright, the Blood Cheese Thirst. So we might be just playing a lot of uh, removal, but we will find out. We will freaking find out. As I said, with the Quandrix command, we can just shuffle those things back. But if we can get a Dragon Scar Elite ready to rock and roll as soon as possible, I would be very. Oh, he's just a mill deck. He is just a mill deck, milling us lands. Yes, 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 yes. Alrighty. So, we're not using the coma yet. But we're using the cultivate, uh, the fable passage yet, because of the coma. So, sooner or later, I think the coma is really, really freaking good in this matchup. Because it means that we will have a uh, uncounterable snack uh, very soon. Very, very soon. And with the Quandrix command, we can always shuffle stuff back. The Brazen Borrower. Are you serious? You're just using a Brazen Borrower here. Alright, alright. Yeah, you do that. You freaking do that. So do you have a counter spell now for the Dragon Scarred Elite? Do you? Do you have it? Could also just be the Brazen Borrower here. I'm kind of counting on that. Just being a brazen borrower. So, 
This only artifact or enchantment spell, which is a little bit sad, but the other modes are just so good. So good. Alright, so we're passing the turn here. And we will wait what he does. He's putting down the Brazen Borrower. Alrighty, that is kind of fine with me. Kind of very fine with me. But what do we have in here? He has another freaking Ruin Crab. Oh, seriously, that is bad. And that is so bad. Alright, so I think this is just as good as time as any. Well, do we really want to return that sucker to his hand? I think we should just keep it. I think we should just freaking keep it. Alright, so we have five in here. So that means that next turn we can put down the grade two, four, six. Well, it still costs one more, so I really want that great hand. Really, really want it. And uh, us getting stuff back is not even that bad. Not even uh, that bad. It's all stuff that he can't get that will make his... Uh, what's his name again? You know, the spell that uh, counters stuff into a uh, Drown in the Lock? Yeah, we'll make the Drown in the Lock just a little less possible. Which I like a lot. A lot. So, now even if he counters or if he returns my Dragon Scar Elite once more, I'm kind of fine with that. We're getting in there for five. Freaking five. He does return it. So you do know that I will draw cards now, don't you? You do know that I will draw a lot of cards now. And I found another Dragon Scar Elite, isn't it pretty? Oh, and a third one. I mean, why the heck not? Why, why the heck not? So that means that we can put down the Coma next turn and the Dragon Scar Elite, which is so freaking awesome. Oh, I love it. I freaking love it. So there's nothing he can steal apart from the Great Hench. Would be a little bit uh, bad if he did. Just a little bit bad. But I still have a feeling that we're kind of in the driver's seat. Against rogues. Of all things unholy. So he might have a Zerid son in hand. But if he would, why isn't he attacking in already? Maybe he's fixing himself a sandwich. Who knows? If he isn't, I think here it is. The Zerid son. And he will steal my greatest hench. Lucky for him, he milled me one more great hench. That wasn't bad at all. Oh, I slapped my microphone. I'm sorry. I'm still getting used to the microphone right in front of my face. Just as I freaking thought. All right. So he has the Zerid Sun now. Pretty annoying. But we have the coma next turn. So he has a great hench as well now. Which is very good. Nice. Oh. He's taking the Brazen Borrower. The Mad Lad. The freaking Mad Lad. Alrighty, so, we need to put down the blue here, just to make sure that we can use whatever we want to use. And we can now tap down the Zerid Sun very efficiently every single turn. So we're getting in there. And I think we're just putting down another Dragon's Guard Elite, I mean why the heck not? What's he going to do about it? What is he going to do about it? So. The Brazen Borrower can attack in as much as he wants to. I really don't care. But uh, yeah, we can just, you know, tap down everything he owns. So that is very good. And we're drawing a million cards every single turn now with the Great Hand and the Edgar Innkeeper. And we're still at over half of our deck. Oh boy, this is odd. This is odd. This is even. So we will see what he chooses here. But I think it's going to be even, to be honest. If he wants to get rid of my Cosma, coma and everything he owns, that is kind of fine with me. Yeah, as I thought, it was even. It was freaking even. So he still can't be attacking in. Still can't be attacking in. Well, he can with the Brazen Borrower, but that's it. That's freaking it. So. Just had to make sure, oh boy, that we're drawing nothing but lands now. All right, I'm getting some lands out of my deck now, because I'm very afraid that uh, we're still drawing nothing but lands. So, give me something good. Give me something to work with. It's another land. Give me something good. Give me something to work with. It's another land. All right. All freaking right. So we're still attacking in here. I mean, we can just 
block down the Zerit son. With uh, something. Alright, we got rid of one of his stupid little crabs. That is so good. So, what you gonna do here, my friend? What you gonna do here? Oh boy, we really drew three, four lands in a row? Hmm. Impressive. Not bad, my friends. Not bad. I mean, that. that is honestly really good. Also, we got like all the fabled passages already. So, but that also means that we will draw something good very soon. Uh, the Soaring uh, Thought Thief. Alrighty. Alright, Soaring Thought Thief away. So, he's going to attacks. Only with the Brazen Borrower. Interesting. And with the Zarid Sun. Interesting. Interesting indeed. So yeah, I don't really care about the Edgar. We're still drawing a lot of cards with the Great Hench. No matter what we get. So getting rid of the Zarid Sun here is pretty sweet. Not gonna lie. And we're getting some life back with our Great Hench anyway. So that is still very sweet. And I really hope that we draw something other than a fifth land in a row here. Would be awesome. Would be freaking awesomeness. Okay. Yeah, you do that. That is fine with me. That is absolutely fine with me. That also means that we draw something other than a land here. One million percent. Another snakeskin veil. Okay. Well, we're using the snakeskin veil anyways. We're attacking him with a snack, so that is that is pretty good. That is pretty good. Alright, and we now have the snakeskin veil, so we can even sacrifice our snakes next turn. Well, at least one or two of them. To make our coma untouchable. I mean, look at this. He's on four lands, we're on freaking nine lands already. That is insanity. And now we drew two snakeskin veils in a row, so the chance that we draw a land are 26%. That is a lot. Oh, he can bring back a ruin crab now. Alrighty, bring back the ruin crab. Do it. Just you do it. He now wants to mill me hardcore. Oh boy, those were some nice mills, not gonna lie. And all of my frantic inventories. All of them. Alrighty. So he's only attacking in with the Brazen Borrower. That was a good mill. Liked that one. Alrighty. So now we're uh, tapping down the Luris because I don't want him to get life back. Absolutely don't. So. I mean, we're still looking pretty A-OK -okay here. Still looking pretty A-OK -okay here. And we're drawing some cards. So maybe we even find something nice. Are you freaking serious, game? Come on. <laughs> Come the frick on. This is so insane. This is so freaking insane. All right, so we are tapping down. The Ruin Crab. I mean, we're just we're just starting our tap down everything he owns plan. And I still think that we're still in a very good position here. And uh, yeah, sooner or later, we can tap down everything he owns. But we have to be a little bit careful here. Just a little bit. Little bit. Alright, do I want to get in for some damage here? Well, the three damage is alright already. It's pretty much alright already. Alright, alright, alright. So, can he mill us before we draw something nice? Does he have another land in hand? That is the question. I mean, we had like a 18% chance to draw land and we did it. We freaking did it. Not bad. Not freaking bad. So, I think we still have a chance to turn this around. We just have to see how. So here's another Ruin Crab. We still have 16 cards in here. So he needs a Ruin Crab and a Fabled Passage to mill us this turn. But does he have it? He's getting in with both Thieves. That is nice. That is very freaking nice. I love it. Freaking love it. 
not gonna lie. I really freaking love it. Do it. Do it. And Delurus. No, not Delurus. Okay, he's not attacking in with Delurus. Oh, he is. He's attacking in with Delurus. All right. Oh, he's not. Okay, he's not attacking in with Delurus. Milling us a land. We would have drawn another land yet. Can you freaking believe it? Can you freaking believe we would have drawn another freaking land? Holy smokes. Holy freaking smokes. So. We now will see how we're doing this. Alright. This is very freaking good. So I will tap down. The Luris. No matter what he has here. We freaking have him anyways. We freaking have him anyways. We're tapping down the Ruin Crab. Yeah, we freaking have him. We freaking have him. Because of the snakeskin veils, he can't destroy our creatures. And we're tapping also down the other Ruin Crab. Because we really don't want him to, uh, you know, have anything ready to rock. So. Nice. Thanks. Well, you could have you could have made that math yourself. So now we're attacking in. It's still not one million percent sure that we've won. Still not one million percent sure that we've won. But we did. We freaking did win. Oh, do it. Come on, target it with whatever. Oh, man. Mmm, coma. You're a beast. You're a freaking beast. Get in there. Rokes, baby. Rokes. Mm, no rank up. Mm. Well, the good thing about drawing all of your lands is sooner or later you will find something other than a land. And we did. So I still think I can turn this around a little bit. Turn around. We are going up against the Persian from Asia. Turn around. Mm -mm. Alrighty. So I like this hand. It is Tempo Deluxe. Opponent's going first. I don't like that. And he's playing... Oh, no. Oh, I don't like that at all. All right. Another Dragon Scarred Elite. Just another one. What is this? A full house. A full freaking house. Can I get a poker? Can I get a poker? I would love to get a poker. All right. We still have the uh, Brazen Borrower here. So sooner or later, we can get rid of this Dragon Scarred Elite. So we are putting down the Snarl. Yes, we are showing off what we're packing. But I think we need to kind of race him here. Kind of do. If he has the hammer here, would be kind of annoying, but only kind of. We will find out very soon. Uh, very soon. Okay, the Skyclave Apparition. Did not, uh, did not count on that, to be honest. I honestly didn't think that he had the Skyclave Apparition, but hey. If you use the Skyclave Apparition here, it means he doesn't have the hammer, which is very good. And now we can put down the Edgar. And we're putting down just another Dragon Scar Elite. I mean, why the heck not? Why the heck not? So, right now we need to, uh, you know, be a little bit uh, smarty pads here. So, we will see what he does. I think he's attacking in with the Seasoned Hello Blade. He has a selfless savior now. Alrighty. And a Luminarch. Not bad. Not bad at all. That is pretty good, to be honest. The Luminarch Aspirant is pretty good, especially with his Outside of Life's Bounty hanging in there. Is pretty good. Pretty freaking good. Alright. So, is he sacrificing a selfless savior here? Is he really now? Sacrificing the selfless savior. I mean, we still have another Dragon Scar Elite, but we can pump the Dragon Scar Elite from now on, which is pretty good. And uh, we can still do two Brazen Borrowers if we really want to. Also, the Snakeskin Veil, very, very good in this situation. Not gonna lie. Not a gonna freaking lie. Alrighty. So we sadly need to chill here. We sadly need to chill. But uh, yeah. We can uh, always throw the Edgar Innkeeper under the bus, and we absolutely... What the heck is this? Alright. 
All right, I haven't seen this card. Why is this illegal? Oh, it's one of these only arena legal cards. I gotcha. Freaking gotcha. All right. All right. So, how are we doing this? How are we freaking doing this? So, we're looking a little bit bad. This only gives hexproof, not indestructibility. I think we're just doing it like this. Getting the uh, Seasoned Halo Blade out of here. We can't play it this turn anymore. We're pumping our Dragon's Guard Elites a little bit, which is good, which is good. But this is looking really bad. He still has a Selfless Savior, so a uh, block in here would not be too smart. Not be too smart. I know I could have taken the damage, but we need to be careful. Need to be freaking careful. And then we're just chilling. Sadly, we are just freaking chilling. So, let us see what he does here. Oh man, this is so freaking dangerous. This is a dangerous, but he still has to know only what is this. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Okay. Okay. So. This is getting a little bit ridiculous. Just a little bit. Like, what is this hand? What is this hand? Like, perfection into perfection. Okay, the Sparing Regiment is also very freaking annoying. But if we can uh, find something, we're super happy. We are super freaking happy. If we can. If we freaking can. Alright, he's putting it onto this Skyclave Aparithion. Now we are trying to bait him out here. Returning the Leonin War Leader to his freaking hand. Maybe he's using the outside, which wouldn't be even that bad. I would freaking love if he did. And uh, he also can only give it protection from green. Uh, from blue. So that is very good. Our Dragon's Guard Elites will still trigger. So everything is still okay. For now. For now. Passing two attacks. Getting in with these two. Let us see where he puts the counter. Puts it onto the Leonin War Leader. Alright. So we can force him to sacrifice the Selfless Savior, which is really good. If we do it like uh, this. Oh, this is way better than I hoped it would be. Way freaking better than I hoped it would be. Alrighty. So yeah, he lost his leaning war leader. That is very freaking good. We drew another land. That is very freaking bad. But is it though? Is it? It's not too bad to be honest. Because we can still push our dragon's guard elites into oblivion. And we will. We will freaking push them into oblivion. So, we're still in it. We are still in it. He lost all of his protection. We are on 7 life still. It's a 6-6 six, six now. We'll become a 7-7. Seven, seven. But we have 2-4-6. So, we have 6. That is enough to push our Dragon's Guard Elites into oblivion. So, where are you putting your counters? Over there. Alright. Alright. Are you going to attack? Are you now? You are. I think he doesn't know what the Dragon's Guard Elite is capable of. Yeah, he doesn't. He just doesn't. Alrighty. Oh, freaking righty. So we even got a blocker back. We even got a freaking blocker back. That is so nice. Oh my lord. This is turning around real quick. Real freaking quick. So, we now even have another Dragon Scar delete. Okay, but we're chilling. We're just freaking chilling. We can block everything he owns now, which is pretty freaking good. And I think that we're just uh, starting to attack in with the Dragon Scar delete here.
I mean, we need to do something. If he wants to block with the seasoned Hallow Blade here, be my freaking guest. But I really hope that we can find something here. All right. All right, all right, all right. So we can still block with the 2-2. Uh, and sooner or later, we can just double up the counters on this Dragon Scar Delete as well, which is pretty good. Unless, of course, yeah, he has another Skycliff Apparition. Which I was just about to say. If he has another Skycliff Apparition, would be so freaking sad. And, of course, he does. Of course, he does. All right. And a Professor of Symbology, but that also means that he can't be... Oh, well, he still can. He can just throw away whatever he's learning here. So, hey. So, hey. We're still not out of the woods yet. Oh boy, the introduction to Annihilation. So does that even mean that he really wants to attack in? If he does, he will lose his introduction to Annihilation. He will just freaking lose it. He does not want to attack in. Alright, that means that we can put down the Brazen Borrower here. And maybe we even draw something nice. Who knows? Who the heck knows? It's a land. It's a freaking land. Okay. That is so not nice. That is so not nice. So can we even be attacking in here? I mean, with the Brazen Borrower we can 100%. 1 million percent. But can we do it with the rest? Well, we can't. We can't. If he uses the Introduction to Annihilation here, he will get rid of one of these Dragon Scar Elites. Which is also kind of fine with me, because we will draw a card and hopefully finally find something other than a... Are you serious? Are you freaking serious? So we are drawing land after land and this is what he gets? Or they? Crazy. Crazy. Am I a little bit, uh, a little bit sad about that? Yes, yes I am. Yes, I 1 million percent am. 1 bajillion percent. All right, so is he uh, getting rid of the introduction to Annihilation here? I hope he is. I hope he frickin' is. He the opponent. No? Okay, well, we got rid of his most... Oh, come on, game! Come on, game. Two, four, five, six. We're just dead because we drew nothing but lands in the last few turns again. Oh, come on. It's like... The game is so weird sometimes, so freaking weird. I mean, we drew, honestly, nothing but lands for the last few turns. Come on, give me a Brazen Borrower. The Decisive Denial. That would have been so nice in our hand. Like, so freaking nice. And it's not like we have more lands than a normal deck. Good game. Good freaking game. Holy Maloney. What was that again? What is this all about? Why am I drawing nothing but land since two games? Come on. Come on. <sighs> Sometimes I question myself. Should I just put in only maybe eight lands per deck? Sorry about that. I'm sorry about that, man. All this saltiness is so not cool. But I still am. I still freaking am. All right. So we have a two-lander now. And just you wait. Just you freaking wait. We will not draw any lands this game. Just not draw any freaking lands. I, I know it. What is this? Oh, there's a land. Well, I shouldn't have spoken too soon. Should not have spoken too soon. So we offer him the trade here. <clears throat> All right, he's not taking the bait. Just not taking the bait. Oh, interesting. Interesting. All right. We're putting down the Edgar anyways. Even if we don't draw here, because he will kill it with the Bone Crusher Giant. I'm still fine with that. The Maul of the freaking Skyclaves. All right. All freaking right. So, we still have the Brazen Borrower. Okay, we are still drawing a million lands. That is good to know. That is very good to know. As I said, a million lands. <clears throat> so, next turn when he... Uh, well, we also have the Quandrix Command. We have a lot of stuff to do. The Showdown of Ghosts. 
Holy smokes, a Blade Historian. All right. I see you, my friend. I freaking see you. So. I still think we're racing him. I still think we are. We will just return the Flame Scroll Celebrant to the hand. Seems pretty good to me. Seems pretty good to me. Yes, yes, yes. Do it. Do it. So. Flame Scroll Celebrante to the hand, eh? And we're drawing. The Dragon Scar Elite seems pretty sweet. Alright, the Great Hench also seems pretty freaking sweet. And that is why I'm putting down the Greatest Hench here. We might also just be dead. And I really hope we aren't. I really hope we aren't just freaking dead here. Because if he puts this onto here, it becomes a 4-4. And if he has one or two more spells, well, but he also needs to play one or two more spells. And this costs like four to equip. Holy smokes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But it doesn't really matter. We can still bring down the coma. Tap down everything he owns. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. Alrighty. So, what you doing, my friend? Not doing your attack again with the Dragon Scar Delete. Uh, with the Blade Historian? That is questionable at best. Just questionable at best. My turn. Oh, he can kill the Edgar, can't he? He can just kill the Edgar. But are you going to do it here? Are you going to kill the Edgar? Are you now? He just surrenders! What? What? And we're just getting no freaking rank ups. So, I'm sorry about that. I was, my brain was just smoking. And you're just surrendering. What the heck is up with that? What is up with that? Alright, so maybe I'm a little bit salty that we draw enough mud lands all the time. But, uh, that's just how it is sometimes. Alright, we're going freaking first. I love it. Freaking love it. Oh no, we're up against a Tibble Trickery deck in our last game, aren't we? Aren't we? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <clears throat> we are up against the Tibble's Trickery deck. And we have nothing to counterspell here. Just nothing. I hope we find a decisive denial here. I really hope we do. But uh, with the Brazen Borrower, no matter what he gets here, we can still return it to his hand. So it's still kind of okay. Kind of. But we will find out if it really is. I just hope he doesn't find, like, he didn't find anything. He just didn't find anything. Mmm, table streakery deck, get the heck out of here. Get the heck out of here. It's 2021. All right, I almost forgot to record because I was so salty because someone was playing the table streakery deck. I'm just kidding. I just forgot to record. I, I, I got it for free. I got it for free. Just a free win. And we're going second here. Against Kali you, Kali you, Kali me. Alrighty. We're just doing it like this. I kind of count on us finding another land. Because, uh, you know, of the track record. Alright, what is this? What is this? Oh, it's a cleric's deck. Alright. Freaking love it somehow. I just freaking love it. Somehow. Alright. So, we can always return this to his hand. To a day at their hand. I need to get that stuff straight. Alright. The Righteous Valkyrie. Is it also Cleric? It of course is. Why shouldn't it be? Why shouldn't it be of course also a Cleric? But well, we're getting our Love Struck Beast down very soon. So, uh, everything is still bueno. Yeah, get in there. Get in there. I don't care. I don't care. Even got the Dragon Scar Delete now. Not bad. But I think putting down the Love Struck Beast here is just a little bit better. So we can fight the Righteous Valkyrie very soon. If they have another Righteous Valkyrie, would be bad. Would be very, very bad. 
getting five life, well, it still wouldn't put them where they want to be, but still would be very bad. Very bad. But at least they can attack him with the Cleric of the Life Spawn, which is very good. The Luminar Gasparant, well, now they can. Now they freaking can. But will they? Oh, well, yeah, they can. They can. Because they can just put the counter onto the Cleric. Yes, there, there they are. There they freaking are. But they aren't attacking in. Interesting. Oh, they are. They are attacking in. Alright, we're not blocking. We're taking a hit here for the team. Alrighty, so how can we do this? How can we freaking do this? So I kind of want to get rid of this stupid Righteous Valkyrie, to be honest. And I want to get rid of the Luminarch Aspirant. So I'm not doing anything yet. I'm doing everything during their turn. Seems pretty good. Pretty freaking good. So the Righteous Valkyrie is kind of annoying. Alright, though, this is pretty bad. This is pretty bad. But we're just returning the Cleric of Life spawn here. Now we're taking three still. And that is why... I'm going to fight the Righteous Valkyrie. Alright, Righteous Valkyrie was fought. Vito, get down here. You get nothing now. You just get nothing. Nothing at all. So... The Luminarc Aspirant will be not attacking in. I, I didn't think so. Alrighty. So, we're putting down the Dragon Scar Delete. We're putting down the Snarl. Yeah, I mean, why the heck not? Why shouldn't we put down the Snarl? So, now we're attacking in with the, with the Lovestruck Beast. Nothing else to do here, to be honest. Alright, so we need to be a little bit careful here. Just a little bit careful. But we can still Snakeskin Veil, we can still Frantic Inventory, so everything is still A-OK. -okay. They want to attack in? We have the Snakeskin Veil. So everything is good. For now. For now it is. And cleric activated. Do they have another Cleric? To go with the Vito, uh, yeah they do. Of course they freaking, oh my lord, and what a Cleric they got. What a freaking Cleric they got. Okay. Pretty bad. Not gonna lie. Alright. So. Are they attacking in? I don't think they are. But we're drawing here with the frantic inventory. But we're looking pretty bad. Okay, the coma. And that is kind of good. We are putting down the greatest hench because we really need to. Now we're drawing some lands. Getting ourselves a blue and a green. And a blue on the field and a green. We didn't play a land yet. So that means that we can chill here and have the snakeskin veil, which is pretty good. But they will get a lot of life back very freaking soon, which is very freaking bad. So this is five, right? All they need is one more land to be very freaking dangerous here. Another Luminarch Aspirant. Okay, that's another Cleric. Draining us for another two life here. Very annoying, very annoying. Will the coma even help us here? Well, it does. It does. It really does help us. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That is not going to happen, my friend. Absolutely not going to happen. Alright, pushing that cleric into oblivion. Into freaking oblivion. Don't like to see that. Really don't like to see that. And it's attacking in. Well, we still have blockers. We still do. And now we also have a coma. Which is pretty freaking good. And we found another brazen borrow, which is also pretty freaking good. So. Last turn. Resolve. Tap down the veto. Because I really don't want him to uh, use the veto. If they get a fifth life, would be a fifth land, would be very freaking bad. 
And just to be super safe, we would see what they have on the stack. But uh, I might just be returning something to their hand here, like the Cleric of Life's Bond. Are you serious? Are you a freaking serious? They're super serious. Super freaking serious. Okay, okay. We're we getting drained for another six here. Pretty painful. The Elite Spellbinder even now. Alrighty. But that also means that we can return the veto here without any worries. Elite Spellbinder gets nothing. Nothing at all. And we can throw our uh, Love Struck Beast under the bus here. We just can. And we'll have to make a choice here. But I think I'm just throwing that Love Struck Beast under the bus. Okay. Love Struck Beast, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. We got another coma. Not really useful. But we got a Brazen Borrower so we can draw ourselves some stuff. That is very freaking good. Very freaking good. So. Can still just attack in with the Dragon's Guard Elite here. If they block, we can double the counters, which is also very freaking good. And I think that I might be doing that. I might just be doing that. Okay, throwing away a Cleric of Life's Bond. Like to see that. Freaking love to see that. They don't. They don't. Okay. So how much is this? Six. That would also mean that I can't be playing anything after. So let's, let's just not. Let's just not. Alright, sooner or later we will get them. We will freaking get them. We have another coma, we have enough life to get back every single turn. If they play a veto here, I would be a little bit sad, but only a little bit. But sooner or later we can just tap down everything they freaking own. Everything they freaking own. So this is another two. Yep. But we still have the greatest hand here, so yeah, still not too much to worry about. Still missing a fifth land. That is why we're putting the stop on the upkeep here. And we can just sack one of the snakes, so everything is still A-OK. -okay. We can also sacrifice the Edgar Innkeeper, we will see. The Blutchy's Thirst. Alright, let's try to find something nice here. Another Dragon's Guard Elite, alright. And the Decisive Denial, oh boy. Yeah, that is kind of annoying. Kind of annoying. Because we, uh, we are missing a blue source here. So that really is kind of annoying. But well, only kinda. Only kinda. So we can also get rid of the Veto here, which is pretty sweet. Sweeto. Very sweeto. And we also have another Dragon Scar Delete, so everything is still A-OK. -okay. Everything is still A-OK. -okay. So how are they going to attack? Kali you. Kali you when you get there. Kali you when you get there. Okay. Questionable at best. But I take it. I freaking take it. So, we're getting rid of one of those clerics, which is pretty freaking good. And now we're getting ourselves some more life back, which is also pretty freaking good. We drew another Edgar. But we want the Dragon's Guard Elite more than the Edgar. So let us see what we can find here. Another Dragon's Guard Elite. I like that. Freaking love it, to be honest. We got it, this one, so we can get ourselves some more blue sources, which is pretty good, I'm not gonna lie, not gonna lie. And we didn't play a land yet, so that is also very freaking good. So. Now we're fighting uh, the Vito, because we really want to get rid of that sucker. We really do. And now we are putting down another Edgar. Putting down the Lovestruck, Heart Desire. 
making our Dragon's Guard elites even freaking bigger. So have we won here, by the way? Have we freaking won here, by the way? If I tap down the Elite Spellbinder next turn. So, we're just getting in with everything. I would just tap down the Elite Spellbinder next turn. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty freaking good, not gonna lie. Not a gonna freaking lie. Alright, two off. Two freaking off. Okay. I don't think that they can kill us this turn. I don't think they can. And they just surrendered! Mmm! 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 What is going on with the no rank up? What is going on? I want that rank up. I want that rank up. Alrighty, so drawing a lot of lands. Everything is fine. We beat a table trickery deck by them having nothing. We still beat them. I'm still gonna leave it in because screw them. Screw them. I'm not cutting out any games anyway. So here we are at the end of the video. And uh, yeah, we had a very good track record. I like this deck very freaking much. We still drew a lot of lands. We still drew a lot of lands. And this one game that we lost, it was because we drew a lot of lands. So, but in the end, Koma is an absolute tempo freaking beast because she can tap down so much stuff. And uh, yeah, with the Brazen Borrowers, the Dragon's Guard lead, maybe I should keep in something that gives you creatures trample. But uh, they uh, can just remove it with the Skyclave Apparition. They can just remove it with a uh, Binding of the Old Gods. So uh, it is a pretty tough choice what to put in. Maybe the one spell that gives uh, Trample, but I cut it this time. Maybe I should have kept it in. Who freaking knows? Alright, if you enjoyed what you've seen, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Help me reach the next big milestone of three freaking thousand. That is the next big thing up there that we want to reach. 3k on the way. Alright, I wish you all a very freaking happy Friday. If you're watching this on Saturday, happy Saturday. If you're watching this on any other day, I'm sorry, the weekend is over. So, uh, very freaking sorry. You should have watched it before. Should have watched it on your weekend. Alright, I'm Matches Malone, and I will see you all tomorrow!